Hey guys, it's me, John Avenger, once again, and welcome to another Sci-Fi Month 2 review, and this is of the 1979 first in a series of films from the late, uh, from the 60s Star Trek movie, uh, show, and this is the very first one, the mo probably one of the most hated in the, in the series, original series, Star Trek, the motion picture, yeah, I first saw this movie like a couple weeks ago, um, I saw it on cable. It was pretty. It was pretty decent. I don't think people are giving it enough credit. It was the first Star Trek movie, so I give it a bunch of credit for trying. Because even though, yeah, the movie is very long, and uh, I saw the theatrical cut because the extended director's cut is like two hours. It's like much longer. But yeah, it is slow. But Alien was a slow movie, and the movie I think is very well done. You know, the visual effects for the time still hold up. The cast still holds up. I never saw the TV series from the 60s, so I just went in with an open mind, and I enjoyed it for what it was. I mean, yes, there is the, there's no main villain in the movie. It's kind of, you know, villainless. It's just like a beam of light that comes and destroys people. That's about it as a villain. And, uh, yeah, it does move at a slow pace, but other than that, I think the characters are engaging enough to keep you interested. I love the score. That was the original um, music in the uh, Next Generation show. That's the Star Trek that I grew up watching, at least a couple of episodes of that. Um, you know, it's a great cast. William Shatner, Leonard Nimoy, um, Nichelle Nichols, um, and a bunch of other people. You know, this is a great, a big cast. I mean... Yeah, there's one person in the cast that I don't care for, and that's Stephen Collins. That, that guy's a sick bastard. I don't want to see him act again. He's just, you know, good actor, but, you know, what he did was inexcusable. And uh, screw him in the movie. And he dies anyway, so it's fine. Uh, there's this uh, alien, this woman with a bald head that's uh, it's just some Indian lady that talks in, in the film. She's kind of monotone. And, yeah, when they show the Enterprise, it's like a really long scene. But it didn't bother me because I'm like, I'm watching it at home. I'm not in a theater. And it's not two and a half. It's not two hours and 45 minutes like Star Trek, uh, like Transformers Age of Extinction, which that's long and boring and nothing happens. And a slow movie can work as long as you're engaged with the characters because Alien is a slow movie. You don't see a xenomorph until like almost an hour into the film. And uh, but it's still engaging. And uh, the film looks good, you know, back in 1979, you know, this was two years after Star Wars, the original classic, uh, A New Hope. And uh, they wanted to capitalize. They're like, oh, we've never done a Star Trek movie, so let's try it. And it worked. Granted, the sequels are much better. Um, but the first one, I don't think it's horrible. It's decent. I have to see the director's cut eventually because I'm, I'm not one of these Trekkies that are so biased against it. The only Star Trek movie I hated was Insurrection, which I'll get to that one later, but because it was boring. This one at least got me in, you know, started into the Star Trek franchise, you know, the film franchise. And, uh, you know, it's, it's a great cast. You know, you got classic characters, you know, Captain Kirk and Spock and McCoy and, um, you know, Scotty and, you know, and, and, uh, Uhura. you have a bunch of characters and don't listen to, I don't listen to what J.J. Abrams says that, oh, Spock and Kirk hate each other. No, screw that. That is not how it happened. Those those two guys would do anything for each other. They are best friends, not gay lovers. You know, if any stupid gay agendas out there, no. Spock and Kirk are best friends to the end. They are, t they are, are, are not, that's tied together. And, uh, you know, you can tell that Leonard Nimoy and William Shatner did care about each other. R.I.P. for Leonard Nimoy, you were a great Spock, you're still the best Dr. Spock that there is, you know, you did this for decades and people loved you for it, and I will never forget you for that. Um, it's just an engaging movie. I know a lot of people say that it sucks. I don't think it's bad. You know, it's, it's it, for the first film in a franchise, it got the ball rolling, so I give it credit for that. Yeah, just, I don't care for Stephen Collins, like I said. Um, the, the movie does have some slow spots, and there's no villain. Other than that, if you had fixed that, I think this movie would have been more revered than it was. But I think it's underrated, and it's not the worst Star Trek movie. Oh, I will be getting to the, those soon when I see the other ones. So anyway, that's my review on the first Star Trek movie, Star Trek The Motion Picture. I don't think it's horrible. It's slow, but if you're willing to give it a chance, it's worth your time. At least... 
the theatrical cut I thought was good. You know, I will eventually watch the longer cut when I'm ready for it. And I'm not a hater. I'm not. I see. I am a Star Wars fan, yet I'm willing to give Star Trek a chance because I'm a person that gives. I'm a jack of all trades. I'm willing to watch any kind of film as long as it's not insulting to me. Anyway, this is my review on Star Trek The Motion Picture. Thanks, guys, for liking, subscribing, and commenting. You guys are awesome, and I'll see you in the next one. Later.